Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Here is a probably quick follow-up video on my uh, off-grid efforts. So I don't really want to go off-grid here, but uh, I just want to show the possibility um, of what we can do. And I've made a video about this before, but uh, today I will go a bit more into detail of what's actually happening. So we have the best time of the day for my balcony solar system here. Um, three solar panels, um, <clears throat> 450 watt inverter here, temporarily placed it here, normally it's mounted outside, and another 350 watts of inverter down there. And then finally over here, another solar system. And combined they uh, reproduce about 1.1 kilowatts during this time of the day. Normally this energy would um, well first go into whatever appliance I have running or maybe in the car if I'm currently charging it and if it's not needed there it will go into the battery that is uh, installed in the basement and if that is full the energy will go into the grid. Today though I have gone off grid and all the energy is being exchanged only with the car. Let's take a look at that. So we start here with my little combiner plug. So inside here we have shorted all three phases uh, because yeah, German houses are usually have all their loads distributed all over three phases and we want to combine them all onto one phase. And then the cable runs over there and ends up on this off-grid inverter here. What's uh, special about it is it's got no DC-DC stage. Um, so don't be fooled by what it says on the label here that board is no longer in there. That board is actually right here. Let's try to not cast a shadow on it. Um, and as you can see, this used to have a stage from 12 volts or with some transformers uh, to the high voltage. So this board is not bidirectional. So if you send energy in here into the AC side, it will just blow up the capacitor, but it will not be transferred back onto the DC side. In this one, however, because there is no DC-DC stage, the energy can flow where in the direction it needs to flow. So um, if the voltage that we're feeding in here is higher than the voltage this wants to produce, the energy will flow back into the battery instead of being drawn from the battery. Good. Um, proof of that is inside the car. Yes, as you can see here, um, yeah, the power is fluctuating because it's essentially um, 50 hertz uh, AC, so it's not uh, continuous power that's going in there, and the Leaf BMS doesn't like that sort of uh, power. So anyway, yeah, we see about one kilowatts on average is going into the battery right now because there's no, nothing being consumed by appliances or hardly anything. I'm just charging my laptop right now. And you can see here I've got the type 2 cable plugged in but it's not plugged in on the other side here. Its only purpose is to wake up the car, wake up basic components um, like the VCU, the DC-DC converter and also this inverter um, can be run when we're in charge mode. Now I was going to show this to you up on the computer, but I think why not use the whiteboard that's been here for, I don't know, three years for the first time. So yeah, let's do that. Um, so what we've got, um, yeah, sorry about this one. Well, this could be the delimiter from house to outside. So what we've got is a uh, neutral phase, oh, this one's dried out, huh? Phase three, yeah, this one's dried out, so like that. Green one, neutral, yeah, that's better. L3, L2, L1. And yeah, these go, I don't know, we could have a lamp here on L3, 
and then we've got the fridge three-dimensional drawing Let's say on L2 and neutral and then also on L2 let's say we've got one of those solar inverters which go from DC from our solar panel that's kind of how I usually draw a few lines across them yeah which turn the DC from our solar panel to one phase AC like that and then the yeah, this would, could be the inverter that you're currently listening to. Um, and then we could have another inverter. And you know, various other appliances on. Yeah, I'm gonna forego the solar panel for now. Okay, so we've got a mix of consumers and producers in our house. And now, what we do in our special plug here, we leave N as it is and we short out these uh, three so now we've only got basically L and N um, yeah and usually like all these on the other side all these would uh, go to the grid which I think is normally denoted kind of like that so basically there's a circuit breaker or a GFCI to be precise that I've now turned off. So we're completely separate. Even the neutral is separated. Yeah, and this goes by the energy meter and various other fuses into the grid somehow like that. Yeah, and that's open. We mustn't close this while we've got this bridge in because it would be a dead short. Good, and then here we've got another inverter. And we've got our 360 volt car battery connected to it. So, 360 volt. And this inverter is programmed to, to generate a fixed 230 volt on its output. Now, what this means is if we start to draw current from it, this uh, voltage will slightly sag to know, 225 volts or something. And the inverter will compensate internally for it by increasing duty cycles and, well, you know, the drill. Um, now, what if the voltage is above it? It will do just the same. And if I measure our current grid voltage here, you will see it's not 230, I hope it focuses, but it's 232. So the voltage um, is greater than 230 and that's when the energy flow reverses. So in that case the inverter will, uh, will decrease the PWM to, to go back to 230 and that basically makes it a, a, an active rectifier and the energy flow if we've got these inverters producing more power than the consumers consume, the energy flow reverses and goes into that direction. Good. Um, I hope this is the diagram you've all been uh, looking for. Um, maybe just a small addition. Um, the inverter I showed you earlier, the, the PCB that I uh, put next to the actual inverter, uh, what that is is actually a Internally, it's a DC to DC converter. It takes 12 volts on its input. And I think it generates 450 volts on its output. And that, and there's a capacitor. And that is then fed to the actual inverter. And this part here is not bidirectional, so if we start generating energy flow in this direction the energy has nowhere to go and probably the cap will explode instead 
Um, and this inverter up here is just this part. That's why it's a uh, bidirectional. Good. So, um, yeah, I hope you found this uh, follow up somehow interesting. Um, yeah, let me know if I should uh, continue covering the topic, but I think that's pretty much all I'm going to do about it. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. So, now uh, with, without further regulation, if I've got uh, surplus energy, it goes into the car battery. If I need energy, it's being drawn from the car. Yeah, without any further um, intelligence added there. Right, so thanks for watching and uh, I will see you next time. Bye bye. And now just to round it off, we have started the experiment at 73% and now we're at 77